Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another reaction video. Today I'm going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to season 1, episode 2 of The Witcher. Alright, so I had mentioned this in uh, some previous videos. <laughs> I've had this issue happening recently where for no reason, randomly, my jaw just dislocates itself. Um, that sounds... <laughs> Pretty freaky, I know if you've never experienced it, but if you have anyone in your family with have it, that has a TMJ a dysfunction, you'll know this is something that can happen. It's, it's just a thing. It's sometimes, for whatever reason, you have a genetic predisposition to it, similar to like arthritis or whatever, so sometimes your jaw can pop out of joint. This has always happened to me occasionally, but recently it's been happening a lot, and uh, Yesterday, it actually happened three different times over the course of the day. Um, so I was able to pop it back into place, but my jaw is extremely sore and still swollen today. And uh, I'm also kind of paranoid about it happening again, because if I don't rest it enough after it happens, it's more likely to happen again, which is probably why it happened three times yesterday. So I'm trying to push ahead with reactions, but that's going to obviously limit my ability to talk. I need to refrain from being dramatic, so if I feel like an urge to gasp about something or if I have a huge laugh, I've just got to be really careful about my face. So I may be less enthusiastic than usual and probably will not talk as much. Um, through the video at, at the end. So I apologize for that, but I've just got to try and be careful and not injure myself more severely. So just so you're aware going into it. But I'm excited to continue with this series. I thought the first episode did have some flaws, as I mentioned, in terms of some things seemingly you were supposed to have a very big emotional reaction to, but it was kind of difficult to do so with characters you just met. Um, but for the most part, I was really interested in what happened and just curious to see where it goes from here. So, let's not waste any more time or my jaw's ability on this kind of warm-up talk. Let's just get into it, alright? Episode 2 of The Witcher. It's a, a different kind of portal. One that can't be tracked. Huh. See, the one you made is put a target on your back. But this will take you home. Target for home. Look, you can trust me. What's your name? Estra. Wait, what's your... Can I just get out of there, girl? That the show is trying to girl with this horribly, like, in the wrong place jaw. I mean, my jaw didn't look that bad. Right? It didn't look that bad when it was out of place, but it's kind of like, it's, it's similar, so it's just kind of just funny to me that that's what is happening. That there's a girl like that here. <laughs> right now, it seems just spitting. Lurks in your drawers, or the flying drake that will fill you with horror. Need old man the hag to stir up a potion so that your lady might get an abortion. Abort yourself! Oh, oi! Oi! Get the fuck off! I'm so glad that I could just bring you all together. Like <laughs> this this guy just rhyme potion with abortion? And you're some what the fuck? What is this? So Geralt's just hanging out in some like pub on the, the way top you just of a mountain. Sit in the corner and brood. I'm here to drink alone. Good. Yeah, good. No one else hesitated to comment on the quality of my performance, except for you. Yeah, because he doesn't Come on. care. You don't want to keep a man with bread in his pants waiting. 
You must have some review for me. Three words or less. They don't exist. What don't exist? The creatures in your song. Mm. And how would you know? Oh, fun. White hair. Big old loner. Two very, very scary looking swords. Mm. I know who you are. You're the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. Good job just fucking screaming. Call though. it. Ah, need a hand? He's fine. I've got two. Him. One for each of the uh, devil's horns. Go away. <laughs> I won't be but silent backup. Backup? Look, I heard your note, and yes, you're right. Maybe real adventures would make better stories. And you, sir, smell chock full of them amongst. Other things. I mean, what is that? Is that onion? It doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you smell of death and destiny, heroics and heartbreak. Okay. It's onion. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, I could be your barker. Spreading the tales the of Geralt of Rivia, the, the butcher of Blaviken. Oh. Come here. Yeah. Oh! Oh! Yeah, you didn't oh, oh. want to be called that. Come on, Roach. <laughs> yeah, no. You take weeks to lift your stone. You can't bend water. I guess it's been a while. You struggle to perform the simplest physical tasks. And now you lie to me? Your worst fear makes such sense. Even if you were a beauty, still no one would love you. What the hell? To say is right. I've been here for weeks and can barely do shit. I, I can hear them. Cicadas in summer. <gasps> I can taste it. <laughs> These are things you love. These are the things I thought you would love. These girls, how it's done. Oh, her hand. Merlin, no! Gotta the strong amongst the weak. So she didn't catch it in a bottle, she caught it in herself and then she threw it back at her. That's something. What you did there was pathetic and dangerous. It felt pretty powerful to me. There are mages like Sabrina who ignore their emotions. And then there are mages like us who are consumed by them. Us? Like us. Your first night here at Aratusa, you tried to kill yourself. And tonight, you almost killed someone else. It is your job to control chaos, not become it. I can. But if I send you to advise a king, and your precious little feelings get hurt when he won't listen, and you submit to chaos, he dies, his people turn on us, whose fault would that be? Mine. <laughs> no. Mine. For letting you ascend. I understand. Do you? You lie. You keep secrets. You succumb to emotion. 
to weakness. Do you actually have what it takes? Hmm. My real father. He was half elf. Hmm? Do you remember the great cleansing? Thousands of elven lives lost. That's how my father died. His blood is why I'm cursed with a twisted spine. But also maybe why you're so good at magic? Mm. Why am I only worth four marks? Why no one could ever love me? You turn my friend into a slug. An eel. Come, push your friend into the pool. No. Yes. Sometimes the best thing a flower can do for us is die. Wait, so... The girls that don't live up to her Credit where credit is due. That whole reverse psychology thing you did on them was oh, yeah, brilliant, by the way. Little, but... Kill me. I'm ready. Bro, he meant it. But anyway, so... That's the conclusion. The students... They just let us go, and you give all of Netley's coin to the elves. The students that don't pass the test... Philavandal's loot not gift enough for you. She... Yeah, she is a bit sexy, sacrifices isn't she? them for their power to I help do have power respect for that... That's He survived up. the great cleansing once, who knows? Maybe he can do it again. God kicked in his chest. He's a friend of humanity. So give him the rest. That's my epic tale. Our champion prevailed. Defeated the villain. Now pop Okay, well, that was episode two. Um, so, like I said at the beginning, I'm not going to talk as much as I normally do at the end of this video because, you know, trying to avoid some talking. But a couple of things. So, first of all, one of the major points of this episode clearly was introducing Yennefer and the amount of time that we spent with her and cutting back and forth between her and Geralt and Cirilla, Princess Cirilla, now I know her name, um, I think is a pretty good indication that she also is going to be a fairly central character in this story overall. So they started the first episode with Geralt and, and Cirilla, and then this episode they add in Yennefer on top of it. I think that was a good decision because it, it, it doesn't overload us too much with too many of the central characters at once. And I wonder if there'll be more in future episodes or if it'll just mostly be these three as kind of the core. Um, yeah, Yennefer is an interesting character. I kind of, maybe it's just because I'm really into like the magic, magical aspect of her storyline. But I, I felt like I kept wanting it to go back to her sometimes when it was with the, with the other stories, especially uh Cirilla's because that was not as interesting to me this episode um <laughs> I don't know but I was really drawn to Yennefer's storyline but I'm really I'm very curious about her and the way that she was developed over the course of just this even one episode from at the beginning just being a really sympathetic character who is treated like trash by everyone around her literally sold from her family who had forced her to sleep with the pigs um and her greatest fear being that no one could ever love her um and and even if she didn't look the way that she did that no one would ever be able to love her that being her greatest fear and so she comes out as this really like extremely sympathetic character she she gets this opportunity to to 
learn magic at the school and even even the person that sees that possibility in her and takes her away from her shitty family life is also treating her like shit and calling her piglet so from that and then throughout the course of the episode you see her make friends with this one other girl that's in training and then seemingly be falling in love with a guy who also has magical abilities um and seems to care very much for her. You see this relationship developing. And then you find out at the near the end of the episode that for however long, I don't know how long it was actually going on, she's also been like reporting back on her meetings with him to her teacher, basically spying on him and trying to manipulate him for whatever her teacher's purposes are. Of course, he was doing the same fucking thing, and that was a big revelation, too. So, ah, I'm wondering, like, how much of their affection for each other is genuine. It seems like at least some of her affection for him has to be genuine, because the teacher was saying her, her that the whole purpose of that exercise was to see if she could put her emotion aside in order to do it. And it seemed like some of his emotion had to also kind of be genuine because he seemed legitimately upset to be telling whoever, I guess, the relationship with him and and the other, the, the wizard is also like a teacher-pupil one. I don't know, maybe. But seemed to be genuinely upset to revealing that secret about her being part elf. So it seems there is some affection there. Um... But still, nonetheless, they're both betraying each other, and she was willing to make that betrayal. And then she also, not, like, beyond that, betrays her one friend who actually was advocating for her in, like, the worst possible way. She basically is complicit in her, her death, her subjection. I mean, I assume she's dead, because they were comparing that to the flower, but I don't know. We did see her swimming around, so I don't know if, like, she's dead or if she's just transformed forever into an eel to just eternally swim around in there and have her magic ability sucked out of her for the purpose of fueling that place and everybody else's magic or what but yeah she so she willingly betrays someone who for all she knows is a guy that is legitimately falling in love with her and then betrays the one friend she had so her biggest fear is that no one could ever love her but then she finds some people who actually seem to do so, and she betrays them for the sake of what? For the teacher's affection for being able to ascend and gain power? For power? Is it for power? So is her worst fear not actually being able to be loved, but yet nonetheless, when she is able to find that, she is willing to throw it away for the sake of what power control so that's some interesting dynamics about her character there and i mean maybe what that says about the differences between her her underlying fears and and what she thinks she has to do about that i don't know and what maybe she wants versus what she fears but i'm super curious about her even more so now like i like i said her story was the one i was most interested in but now i'm even more interested after all that but i don't know if i like her but I'm definitely interested. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to touch upon with Geralt, we also did see some developments um, in terms of his his ideas about the world, ideas about evil and such. Um, you know, with his discussion of the lesser evil, the discussion of you always have to, to make a choice and no matter what choice you make, there's going to be consequences and you'll have some regrets, you know. Uh, so clearly deeply impacted by everything that happened with Renfri in episode one, which is not surprising. But I'm, I don't know, I'm, so I'm, I'm curious to see how that develops. It's interesting they gave him this, uh, this comic relief sidekick. Uh, wonder if he's gonna continue with us, even though Geralt is like, all right, you go away now. He said that before too, and he literally punched him and he still didn't go away. So we'll see. Um, and then with Cirilla, so she's now with this elf, um, I'm also curious because she has some sort of powers too, which we saw in the first episode at the end, which is what makes her so essential and why the, this army is pursuing her and wants to catch her, not just kill her. 
but they didn't showcase any of that in this this episode we still don't we don't know what that is about so i guess that's still left to come and she is told she needs to find Geralt, but she doesn't know anything about him or who he is she doesn't know he's a witcher apparently so so yeah um I'm curious again to see how all three of these characters develop going forward, um, how they're going to be brought together, presumably, at least Geralt and Cirilla, it seems like, are supposed to be brought together, but presumably Yennefer will be as well, but I'm going to wrap it up here so I can stop talking, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested, Pick, my interest is piqued. I think that there wasn't so much of an issue as there was in the first episode with the emotional lack of connection in certain scenes. So I think they did a good job with this one. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'll wrap it up here and I'll say thank you guys so much for joining me. Hopefully I will see you next time. Bye.